Oh, what's going on guys? I still have my lines for my mask uh, today, but I've been grinding a ton of knives today. I just finished 10 of my Trekker Minimalist model, which is this one. Um, these are uh, 1095 steel and these are no handle version. They get Cerakoted um, and they're just my really super lightweight minimalist kind of backpacker knife. And I just ground 10 of these things and I'm kind of whooped, but it made me kind of think a little bit while I was doing it. And I get asked all the time about uh, tips for grinding better bevels and how I grind mine and stuff like that. And um, it's really hard to show it as far as on the grinder while you're doing it. Um, and I wanted to give a couple tips for people that uh, just want to up their grinding game a little bit and try to get a more consistent bevel and um, try to just get everything even and smooth. So I've been grinding these knives, the same model knife, okay, for the last year probably or so. And I think I've made around 100 of them. Um, and it's funny because I do them in batches of like 10 normally. And up until this batch, okay, that I'm doing right now, I would always mess one up. Um, and so if that gives you any confidence or anything like that, um, I've done, I've ground so many knives and, and obviously more than just this model and I still mess knives up. Okay. So a lot of like, here's one, this was actually from the first batch of these Trekker. This is a Trekker H. You can see it's got handle pins and this one's scrap. And probably if you grind knives, you've done some like this before. And what happened with this is look how thin it is right there towards that sharpening choil. And you just run out of room and this one ended up in the scrap. I probably could have brought it up a little higher, but you can see that edge just got way too thin right there. And it's scrap. And that's kind of part of this whole deal. And uh, if you are freehand grinding like I do, um, it's just part of the deal. You're going to mess knives up. You're going to screw stuff up and it's just part of it. So anyways, I wanted to go over a couple things that honestly helped with this batch of knives. Okay. So every time I do these, I learn something new and it, it makes doing the ne next batch easier and easier and easier. So what I do as far as my, I, I'm kind of assuming that you guys are running a two by 72 grinder with a variable speed controller. If not, um, this still kind of comes into effect, but the speed of the belt is super important. If you can't slow down your belts when you get up into the 120 grit belt, it makes finishing these just a little bit trickier um, and it's a lot harder on belts. So my belt progression with this, with this grind is I start with a 36 grit ceramic red label abrasives belt um, and I have it cranked all the way as high as the grinder will go. Because the main thing you're doing is just hogging material, getting your primary bevels put in. These are all heat treated already. I didn't mention that before. These are all uh, heat treated. I don't do any grinding prior to heat treat. So with that 36 grip belt, as far as how I do it, and take this all with a grain of salt, you know, but I bring up my bevels almost as high as you see them right here, okay? When you're running those 36s, you'll get a little bit of belt slap up high, up top of this bevel. Um, and you clean that up when you get up into the higher grits. So if you're wanting your belt, you have to decide where you want your bevel height to come up to. Um, and leave it maybe, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch lower is at least my tip. Leave it about an eighth of an inch lower than what you actually want your final bevel to look like with that 36 grit belt. As far as your edge thickness goes, I bring mine almost to how thick I want it. Like I'll maybe leave five thousandths on each side to bring in with those with those finer belts. Um, and the reason is when you get up into even the 80 grit and the 120 grit belt, um, they wear out really fast and they're super expensive, I'm sure as you guys know. So my little tip is try to do as much as you possibly can with a 36 grit belt. Um, because they're, they last super long and um, it's just more bang for your buck. So what I do is, like I said, I get these, like I said, um, to that dimension. And then I go from 36 
to 80 grit and then I go to 120 grit. And then with this finish, these all get sandblasted and Cerakoted. So the 120 grit finish is fine for this. If you guys are gonna hand sand the knife afterwards and wanna get a satin finish, I definitely probably go up to 240 at least on it, which is the same, the same kind of steps as what I'm explaining right now. Um, but what I do is when I switch from a 36 to an 80 grit belt, I'll drop my speed down a little bit on the, on the grinder. Like if I'm at 100% power with a 36, I'll drop it to 60% power roughly 60 to 70 percent power with the 80 grit belt and I, and all you all i'm doing with the 80 grit belt is refining the edge or refining kind of the scratch pattern from that 36 grit and i just bring up my bevel just a little bit and all i'm doing is kind of hiding that slap that you're getting from the 36 i don't that's what i call it i don't know if that's really what it is but i'm bringing it up and i'm getting rid of that 36 grit slap with the 80 and you're still going to get a little bit with the 80 grit as well. So you have to leave a little bit more room to where when you put that 120 on, you're going to get rid of that slap and it's going to be a nice clean finish. Like, like, uh, like, let me see if you guys can see this or not. So you can see there's still a little bit of runoff with 120. And that's why if you bump it up to a 240, it eliminates that and it looks beautiful. But like I said, these are getting sandblasted. Um, I'm just trying to get them done and uh, this will be a really nice finish once Cerakoted. So you're only doing probably like four to five passes on the grinder with that 80 grit belt, okay? And like I said, you're refining it, you're cleaning it up and before you move to the 120 grit. So once you get that done and you're happy with the one, the, the 80 grit belt, you're gonna switch to 120 and this whole time, it's hard because you're always trying to get your bevels even. And while focusing on getting your bevels even, you take too much off the edge or your edge thickness is still too much. And that's something you have to pay attention to the whole time and just and try to, yeah, check your, check your bevels, make sure they're even, but also make sure your edge is proper thickness down the whole length of it. And, and as you go, you'll, you'll see that you can adjust it and put a little bit of different pressure on certain points of the knife to make those adjustments. And that's kind of what comes with time and practice and doing it is you'll realize these tiny little pressure adjustments is what makes or breaks that final bevel. So once you get the 80 grit to where it's even, you want, you want everything even at 80. Um, you switch to, a, switch to a 120 grit belt, do the same thing. You're only doing maybe three, four passes on each side, but you're making sure you're getting it all the way down and all the way up and crisping the top of that, of that bevel. You're making sure you're getting rid of that slap from the previous grit. And like I said, if you're going to do a hand sanded finish when you're done, I would probably bring it up to 220 after the 120, um, just to kind of make that hand sanding process a little smoother. But belt progression is something that I get asked a lot. And uh, that's, that's at least what I do. I go 36, 80, and then 120, and, and then 240 after that, if I'm not getting them sandblasted afterwards. Um, so belt speed, belt speed is super important, okay? Slow it down as you go up in grit. Like I said, when I, when I hit the 80 grit, I'm at 60 to 70. When I hit the 120 grit, I'm at 40 to 50. And then if you go up even higher than that, slow it down even more. Um, it's just, it's about saving time, saving money. Those belts are $10 a piece. And if you if your speed's too much, or if you don't have a variable speed grinder, you're just gonna burn through those 120 grit and 240 grit belts. And you might as well just invest in a VFD right now to save yourself a little money. So what's kind of, the thing I wanted to talk about is I always, always, always say use fresh belts, use fresh belts. Um, that's another tip that I wanted to go over a little bit because fresh belts are something that I've always struggled with because this whole thing with making knives is, you know, you have so much time and energy and materials invested. You're trying to save as much money as possible while you're doing this. And when these belts are so expensive, uh, you try to get the most life out of them as possible, obviously. But 
If you have any experience with it, you'll know if you switch to a new belt, especially like an 80 and a 120, when you're getting into that final finish on your bevel, it just makes things so much smoother and easier. And that's a huge, huge tip that I wish I would have kind of taken uh, sooner because I've watched a ton of YouTube videos. I've, I've learned from a lot of different people on grinding knives and new, new belts, super important. The other thing that is maybe kind of silly, but um, kind of there's days where I'll decide that I'm not even going to grind any bevels because your head's not in it. And you have to be so focused. <laughs> it kind of sounds dumb, but you have to be so focused on what you're doing that and confident in what you're doing that day that you know you can bust it out, have the confidence when you step up at the grinder that you're going to nail each grind. And like I said, I've made, I've made about 100 of these trackers and I've messed up a ton. This batch, I did 10. Let me see if I can switch the camera so you can see them real quick. There's all 10 right there, done and finished. And uh, I somehow didn't mess any up. So um, having confidence when you hit the grinder, kind of having a good attitude about it and going for it is super important, as, as crazy as that sounds. So um, what, I, what I learned today with this batch of knives is... is a, having that belt progression dialed in to where you know how far to take each grit before you go to the next one. That's super important. Um, and, and it's hard, but having a good machine helps out more than you'll ever know. If you're grinding on uh, maybe a cheaper machine or a 2x42 or something like that, and you're not getting the results that you want, um, I'm not going to say go out and spend $3,000 on a grinder, but... The amount of improvement I saw when I switched to this uh, KMG TX was huge. Um, and I know people make fantastic knives with cheaper grinders and everything like that. I'm not saying you can't. But having a smooth operating machine um, that keeps your tracking perfect as you're grinding is so key. Um, some of those other grinders I've used... You'll go up to the grinder and start grinding and your tracking will move over a little bit, maybe. Maybe you guys have experienced that too. And it just makes everything so much harder and more frustrating. When you have proper equipment, proper abrasives, proper everything, you get better results. That's kind of all it comes down to. So anyways, I think I touched on the kind of main points I wanted to with grinding bevels. Um, I wanted to explain it a little bit as far as my process goes these this batch turned out really nice and smooth and i am pretty stoked with them so again this is my tracker minimalist model if you want to try to get one of these uh go over to my instagram and i'm going to be taking these in for cerakote actually probably this week i'll have them back in a couple weeks probably and they'll be available i don't know what color i'm going to do with these yet but um Either orange, I did some in high-vis orange that turned out really cool, but I don't know yet. I'm getting off track a little bit, but uh, if you take anything from this video, uh, use new abrasives, be confident in what you're doing, practice. I didn't say that either. Everybody always says, what do you recommend to get better at grinding? And honestly, just grinding and grinding and grinding and grinding. Like I said, hundreds of knives I've made and I still mess them up all the time. So <laughs> maybe that'll help you guys out a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's it. I think that's pretty much everything. I'm kind of rambling now, but if you have any questions for me, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments below, shoot me a message, whatever. Check out these new shirts I got. There's my logo. These turned out really cool. Unfortunately, now that they're out, you can't get them anymore. Really cool back. It turned out awesome. Um, but okay, I am done for the day. I've been working. It's just, I put in a ton of time today to get all those done. Um, but okay, I'm right. Okay. <laughs> I'm just rambling now. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.